season is all about creating heirlooms for today. And today's episode takes it one step further as Cindy Pamkoff uses antiques as her patterns for a new twist on a traditional technique. So Cindy, today we're using some spoons as our inspiration. Yeah. Let's take a look at these rings. These are so pretty. Thank you. You're welcome. So when I, uh, one night I had been admiring some of my mom's antique salt spoons and I had thought how fabulous they would be interpreted as jewelry, but it's always really bothered me when people destroy these really cool heirlooms to make jewelry out of them. While it's beautiful, they're destroying it. And so I thought how perfect it would be to interpret them in metal clay and use them as to make molds that then we can then use for the metal clay and use them over and over again and not even damage the patina on the heirloom. Yeah, what a great idea. It's so clever. And I love the idea that you could use them again and again. So we're going to split this project into a few different segments. So on the first one, we'll talk about how to make the molds. Mm -hmm. Now, normally people would think about using the silicone rubber mold for this. Yeah. But that's not what we're doing. No. All right. <laughs> and the reason why is that it's kind of soft, and if you want to capture all the beautiful detail that these spoons have to them, um, it actually works better to make your mold with polymer clay. So oh, that's okay. what we're going to use. Perfect. So how do we get started? Well, to start with, um, you're going to be using some uh, polymer clay. It really doesn't matter what brand or kind that you use. Um, I will say, though, there are some subtle variations in um, density of them, and some of them will pick up a texture better than others. So you do kind of want to pay attention to that once you, once you get started um, working with them. But all the clays, you have to warm them up ahead of time uh, before you work with them, because they're very stiff to begin with. So I've been holding on to this one for a while, so it's warming up a little bit in my hands. Um, if you have a pasta machine, if you work with polymer clay frequently, um, you can, after you get its initial warm up done, then you can kind of crank it through a pasta machine. And that will just kind of help facilitate the process of warming up the clay so it will capture the designs nicely. If you don't have one of these, you don't need to go buy one, certainly. Um, you can just hold it in your hands for a little a little while longer until it starts becoming malleable. And you'll you'll be able to tell that it's kind of ready to go. Okay. So this one is, uh, this one's good to go. So I'm gonna set that aside for a sec. And then um, I'm gonna coat my work surface with a little bit of, um, a little bit of cornstarch. And that's gonna help the polymer, help prevent it from sticking a little bit. And I'm gonna put some on my, my roller as well just to make sure it doesn't stick. Um, I'm going to roll this out to 17 cards thick and that seriously is like a deck of cards. Um, but these are kind of a fancier model product that's designed for working with metal clay and whatnot that... Uh, yeah, that way you can get it just perfect. Exactly. Uh, and the 17 card thickness is important. I know that seems like kind of a random number, but when we get to making the ring, that part is going to matter. So that's... Uh, then I'm going to just start rolling the clay out. I want a long-ish piece so that I have enough room to capture my, um, my design. And once the clay stops growing, then I know that I'm at the 17 card thickness. All right. I'm going to set that aside, peel that up, and um, I'm going to set that on my can, which I'm going to use in a sec. But I want to talk for a moment about the, um, about the spoons. If you take a look at the, the shape of the spoon, it has a lot of curvature to it. You know, it goes curves down from the bowl in here, and a lot of times there's like a little flourish at the, at right. the end. And if you were to just take your slab of clay and press the, um, press the mold right into it, you would end up with areas that were a lot um, deeper where those curves were. Right, that makes sense. So in order to try to make sure we don't have any issues with that, I am working with a very high-tech tool here, a full can of soda. All right. And this is going to help make sure that we don't end up with any areas that are super deep and um, give you a nice even design. So I'm gonna start by pressing in the back end of the, um, the bowl end of the handle down into the clay. And I'm gonna push it all the way down in. Can you see how I've got it level with the yes. surface of the clay? And then I'm gonna roll it forward forward, 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 and as I go, I want to make sure that as I'm pushing that I'm maintaining that even, um, that even layer. That's going to be sure that I get all the detail from this, and I kind of roll the can forward as I go. And when you get to the end, which this one I have misjudged, and I'm just a smidge out of bounds, but that's okay. I have another one ready. I bet you do. <laughs> 
Um, so I'm just going to press that all the way down in and hold because the at the back end, the tip of the spoon is where all the good stuff usually is. So you want to be sure you capture all that. And then you're really getting some nice detail on your mold. Yep. So I'm going to peel that off a little bit. And then you can see there that I've got the design slightly short, um, but we're going to pretend that that came out perfect. Okay. Then this needs to get baked in the oven. Um, polymer clay has specific manufacture instructions. You want to be sure that you look at your packaging to make sure that you're baking it according to the manufacturer. Usually it's like 230 to um, 275 degrees for okay. half an hour. Here, I'll put it in the oven for you. Why, thank you. Certainly. There we go. Perfect. And then when we're finished, let's bring this one up here. This is an example of one that's already been baked and is ready to go. Um, and if you want to check to see if the design came out like you wanted, you can grab some um, toy putty from the toy store and just take a blob of that. And if you kind of mush it around a little bit and then you can press that into your mold just to check things out and make sure everything came out like you yeah, wanted. Yeah, you want to test it before you start with your metal clay just because you know that's an expensive product and you only use the amount that you need, right? Absolutely. So make sure that your mold is just right. Okay, well let's take a look. These are some beautiful patterns that you have already worked up here for different molds too. Yep. And you know this is perfect if you wanted to make multiples, make them for gifts, teach a class. Absolutely. I can see a lot of uses for these.